the world's most influential golfer Tiger Woods called for the removal of Live Golf's brash CEO, Greg Norman, on Tuesday as PGA Tour loyalists increasingly pin the blame on Norman for the ongoing civil war splintering the sport. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at Greg Norman being replaced as Live Golf CEO. Here's why. Yeah, you heard it right. Known as a shark during his playing days for his menacing style on the course, Norman has been similarly aggressive as Liv's leader, throwing billions of dollars of the Saudi public investment fund's money at dozens of the world's top golfers and making plenty of enemies in the meantime. Norman has raised eyebrows for making less than diplomatic comments about the SPAC. He has said that he has no interest in negotiating with PGA and argued players for the rival tour should be thanking Liv for introducing more competition, and PGA's countersuit accused Norman of misleading players into breaching their contracts. Among Liv's converts are Woods' longtime rival, Phil Mickelson, whose $95 million in career earnings on the PGA Tour trail only Woods' and the 2022 British Open winner, Cameron Smith, both of whom in contracts reportedly worth over $100 million. I'm the pinata to a degree, right? Norman told Forbes in July. About $700 to $800 million, that's how much Liv offered Woods to ditch the PGA Tour. Norman told Fox News in August. The Saudi government could soon make another splash in the international sports scene, as the country's tourism minister, Ahmed Al Khatib, told Bloomberg on Tuesday the country is mulling a joint bid for the 2030 World Cup with Egypt and Greece. This year's World Cup is being held in Qatar, another wealthy Middle Eastern country with a spotted human rights record criticized for sports washing or using athletics to improve its reputation abroad. Greg Norman has heard the rumors about his potential ousting of Live Golf. He's heard the shots from Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy too, but in an interview with today's golfer, Norman insists that he's not going. When the monopolist territory is getting threatened, they're gonna rear their ugly heads up and do what they do, Norman said. But from my whole perspective, I've always taken the high road this year. I will continue to take the high road because I believe in our business model. I believe in our people, I believe in the players' independent rights, and we've already seen a dramatic shift in our audience. In a press conference at the Hero World Challenge, Woods asserted multiple times that for any potential peace in professional golf's ongoing schism, the first step involves Norman's departure. Woods said that the two tours cannot coexist right now, not with their leadership, not with Greg there, and his animosity towards the tour itself. I don't see that happening. Woods was parroting a point made by McIlroy two weeks earlier at the DP World Championship. I think Greg needs to go, McIlroy said in Dubai. I think he just needs to exit stage left. He's made his mark, but I think now's the right time to sort of say, look, you've got this thing off the ground, but no one's gonna talk unless there's an adult in the room that can actually try to mend fences. Then, things can happen. Yet, for this part, Norman claims those hopes are misfounded. I pay zero attention to McIlroy and Woods, right? Norman said. They have their agenda for whatever reason. They're saying whatever they want to say, it has no bearing or effect on me, I'm gonna be with Liv for a long, long period of time. Norman also addressed the ongoing rumor that his job is in jeopardy. Since July, there have been rumblings that Live Golf has circled former TaylorMade CEO Mark King as Norman's replacement. However, Live Golf managing director Majed Al Sarur issued a response in November stating that Norman would remain with the Saudi back circuit. Greg Norman is our CEO and commissioner. Any suggestion that changes are being made to Greg's title or role is patently false, Al Sarur said. In his interview with today's golfer, Norman reiterated Al Saroor's vote of confidence. I've got the support of our investors, Norman said. Our ambitions going forward, I can tell you, are pretty significant and elevated from where we are in 2022. He said, since being named the CEO of Live Golf last fall, Norman has made numerous speaking gaffes, including downplaying Washington Post Jamal Khashoggi's murder by Saudi Arabian authorities by saying, we all make mistakes. His open letter threatening PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan was widely ridiculed. And depending on the day, he facilitates between wanting to battle with the PGA Tour over the fate of professional golf and wanting to work with them. Norman's also been prone to making grand promises regarding his league or player moves, and most of those promises have not come to fruition. Conversely, in spite of his public failings, a number of Live Golf members remain in Norman's corner. Sources have told Golf Digest, believing Norman has provided them proper cover from backlash for joining an entity with numerous human rights issues attached. Live Golf's inaugural season finished in October. Its 2023 schedule is expected to have 14 tournaments, although an official schedule has yet to be released. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video.